So my next guest is about trust of the media and the freedom of speech. So my next guest is Alexei Bobrovnikov. And uh, you did a lot of research. Um, you, you are a former um, TV journalist and print journalist from the Ukraine. And you did a research about money laundering in times of war and uh, smuggling and things like that. But now you don't feel safe anymore. What happened? Well, first of all, my source was killed, and it was the most important part of the whole story when the story has started for, for, for me and for the other people uh, who were trying to dig into those issues. And uh, just a little background of all that stuff. Uh, you know that we have a war with Russia, and I, uh, this is a situation where part of the territory is occupied. But since the stalemate started after the Minsk agreement, and those who follow the, 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 the Ukrainian-Russian uh, conflict, they do know what I'm talking about. So since the stalemate with the Russian Federation, when no parties were able to move forward, uh, the, um, the huge amount of trading and money laundering and those kind of activities started in the war zone. And so I tried, as a former Former business reporter who switched uh, basically to, 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 to war journalism, to, uh, to covering the warfare back home. I, um, but as a former business reporter, when I started to look at the story closely, I've realized that there's a hell of a lot of um, uh, business activities happening in times of war. Sometimes murders are covered up with the... Um, Uh, with the combat activities, with the mopping up operations on, 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 on both sides of the conflict. And uh, the people who are digging into those stories sometimes are killed. And we we're talking about a series of murders back home. And my source for information was murdered two days after the interview we have recorded. And basically it was a no choice mission. I, I did not, uh, it was not my choice to go and um, try to dig into those stories but you can uh, you can imagine a situation when you go for something like that you talk to a person who is a more than competent who's a uh, who's um, working on this on, on the front line for 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 months already and uh, got a clear understanding of what is happening there in terms of business uh, and this is a hybrid war now this is interesting and then this guy is killed and you just left the with the hours of interviews And then you realize that the law enforcement officials, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Ukrainian law enforcement officials, unfortunately, and not about those people from those rogue quasi-states that we're fighting with back home, but uh, those Ukrainian law enforcement of officials, they have destroyed the evidence, or they have, uh, they have not taken into account the evidence who someone destroyed right in front of their eyes. Uh, and the evidence was the... Was the um, in part, it was uh, the research done by those people on the front line to dig into those money laundering stories. So, kind of, your source is dead, you got a computer with a bunch of information that he tried to dig into, the information is um, erased by someone, uh, then you try to restore it and you receive constant threats uh, all over the place. So, so you realize that the threat that they are for you or that, the, that, that, you, that they, someone has tried to assassinate you? Well, that was a claim by the deputy head of the prosecutor's office of Ukraine who was saying that uh, I was the, the next target for the murderers. And then I've uh, requested for um, security, but they denied this request. They just declined it. And um, then, I was, uh, then I was threatened for, I don't know, more than 10 times probably. There were anonymous threats, there were direct threats, there were, you know, this kind of talk like, hey pal, you'd rather do not go for that because uh, the, you would die in some exotic fashion and this kind of things but when eventually when I was fired from the job I was trying to do that when I was still a a accredited journalist who, who was able legally uh, to work on the front line being you know having all the all the documents and um, uh, being supported by the by by the media but when I was fired I've realized that I am alone with this bunch of stuff that we were able to uh, to find and with no support at all And as threats went on, I asked for international support. I've, um, I've, 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 I've contacted quite a few institutions that, I know, the, the WikiLeaks guys would not be happy with hearing that. But in the meanwhile, you're living in Hamburg, right? Um, and, uh, you... I, I would not really speak about the place where exactly... Yeah, okay. where so, sure. 
it's okay. I mean, I'm 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 in Germany. I'm 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 traveling quite a, quite a, quite a lot. Um, I'm doing some uh, some public events here. Uh, when I arrived uh, in uh, Germany, uh, I started to publish the stuff that I was able to to dig, and I was not able to publish back home. And so now I started a. Um, to uh, to work on a on a bigger project, but that's the different story. So, so, so we're talking about the the freedom of the press and how it was destroyed in the in the country you lived, or how is how, uh, so? How do you feel right now? How can we um, recover the freedom of the press in in, in these countries? Look, I feel pretty bad about that, to be honest. Uh, just uh, this morning, I've realized that it was a piece of news come from, from, from Monday or even from Friday, but a former colleague of mine, we, we worked for uh, uh, quite a long time in a daily newspaper some 10 years ago, but now this guy is working for Radio Liberty, one of the programs in Ukraine. He's been uh, um, he's under surveillance. Uh, he's been followed by some, some strange people, and there was a huge uh, scandal emerging just right now, you know. And so I've, I, I realized that unfortunately the, the situation with the press freedom back home has never been that bad. So, so just to sum it up, um, is there anything you could do right now or what you're trying to do as just sort of a last question? Yeah, I want to, um, I want uh, to, uh, the, uh, my, my European colleagues, my German colleagues, um, uh, to, to look uh, very intensely, very closely at what is happening back in my home in my country because uh, uh, it, it, it indeed requires a lot of uh, media attention, a lot of monitoring, fact-checking and double and triple checking the, all the stuff that we see uh, from back there because uh, unfortunately we're, we're, we're in the worst conditions that we ever uh, been and uh, I would not... Um, I, I, my, my, my outlook is, 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 pretty, is uh, pretty gloomy, unfortunately. I can see that. Thank you, Alexei Bobrovnikov. Um, have a good time here at the Medientage and here especially in Munich. And um, I hope you can feel more safe About and safer and safer. Yeah, I feel absolutely safe here. But the thing is that, you know, the, the, the stories happening back home, they do drag you back to the situations that uh, were not solved. And unfortunately, none of the investigation that we were talking about is, is finished. So there is still a long way to go to get somewhere. And we're still in a, as I, as I said, we're, we're, we're still in a, in, in a dark ages uh, in terms of media freedom. So please take care. Thank you. Feeling done.